Hi everyone, it's Professor Primpton, and today we're going to talk about cylindrical coordinates. So you can think of the Cartesian coordinate system as actually a straightforward way to actually describe the location of points in space. However, some surfaces actually are very difficult to model with equations that actually are using what's called rectangular coordinates. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to find the location of points in space, but actually are using the extension of polar coordinates, which are called cylindrical coordinates. And as the name suggests, cylindrical coordinates are actually very useful for dealing with problems involving cylinders. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to convert from cylindrical to rectangular coordinates, and also how to convert from rectangular to cylindrical coordinates. So cylindrical coordinates, let's first review how to talk about polar coordinates, how to convert from rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates and vice versa. So recall, in two dimensions, polar coordinates are actually often useful to find alternative system for describing the location of a point in the plane. And it's particularly important for cases involving circles. So let's say you have a point P, which is in the Cartesian coordinate system or the XY plane, you have a point x comma y. The point is actually describing the distance from the y-axis, that's the x-coordinate, and the distance from the x-axis, that's the y-coordinate, when it's actually written in rectangular coordinates. They're actually describing distances from each of the coordinate axes. However, if you want to write this point in what's called polar coordinates, you actually have these following formulas. You have x is actually equal to r times cosine of theta, y is equal to r times sine of theta, r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, and then also tangent of theta is equal to y divided by x. So x equals r times cosine of theta and y equals r times sine of theta are actually obtained by using right triangle trigonometry. Because if you isolate the cosine function, or if you isolate the sine function on one side of the equation, cosine of theta will be x divided by r, which is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. And then if you isolate the sine function on one side of the equation, you'll have sine of theta is equal to y divided by r, which is actually the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So in terms of this figure, you have the point P, which is the point x comma y, and you want to rewrite this into an equivalent polar coordinate form, which will be the point P, which is r comma theta. The r is actually describing the distance from the origin to the point p. So you have this ray, op, that's the distance is r, and r can be positive or negative, depending on what quadrant that the ray is actually obtained in. And then theta is actually the angle formed from the positive x-axis rotated counterclockwise for a positive orientation to the ray op. And so this angle theta is actually formed between the positive x-axis and the ray op. And so r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. That's because of the Pythagorean theorem with this right triangle. And then tangent of theta is actually the identity sine of theta divided by cosine of theta, which in this case, if you have sine of theta is equal to y divided by r and cosine of theta is equal to x divided by r, you actually get the relationship that tangent of theta is equal to y divided by x or the opposite side divided by the adjacent side of this right triangle. So that's a review of polar coordinates. In the cylindrical coordinate system, the point P will actually be in three-dimensional space, and it's represented as an ordered triple in this form, r, theta, and z. r and theta are exactly the same as in polar coordinates, when you have the projection of the point onto the xy plane. And then z is actually the directed distance from the xy plane to the point P. And so if you want to convert from cylindrical coordinates to rectangular coordinates, the x and the y are exactly the same formulas. x is equal to r times cosine of theta, and y is equal to r times sine of theta, and then since z is the directed distance from the xy plane to the point p, z will actually just be the z coordinate. So this figure actually describes the relationship between converting from rectangular coordinates to cylindrical coordinates. Notice in the xy plane, you have both r and theta that are determined by the same as polar coordinates. r is the directed distance from the origin to the point p in the xy plane, where the point is r comma theta comma zero for the z coordinate being zero. And then theta is actually the angle formed between the positive x-axis and the ray OP. And so x equals r times cosine of theta and y equals r times sine of theta because you actually will have a right triangle formed in the xy plane. And now z is actually the directed distance from the xy plane to the point z. And so the point in cylindrical coordinates for the point xyz will now be r theta z for cylindrical coordinates. On the other hand, if you want to convert from rectangular coordinates to cylindrical coordinates, you need to use these formulas. If you want to find out what is the value for r, you can use r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So if you know the x and the y from the rectangular coordinates, you can find out the value for r by solving for r. If you want to find out the value for theta, you can use the equation tangent of theta is equal to y divided by x, because again, you know the x and the y coordinate from rectangular coordinates, and then the z coordinate will just stay z. So let's try example one. Example one, converting from cylindrical to rectangular coordinates. Find the rectangular coordinates for the following points given in cylindrical coordinates. So we have the cylindrical coordinate, and we're going to convert to rectangular coordinates. So number one, you have the point in cylindrical coordinates, two comma two pi divided by three comma one. And so notice that r is two, theta is two pi divided by three, and z is equal to one. And so now you can find out what is the value for x using the equation x equals r times cosine of theta. 
Well, x is equal to r was 2 and theta was 2 pi divided by 3. So you have x is equal to 2 times cosine of 2 pi over 3. And cosine of 2 pi over 3 is equal to negative half. So you have 2 times negative half, which will give you negative 1. So that's the x-coordinate in the rectangle coordinate system. And now if you want to find the y-coordinate, you use the formula y is equal to r times sine of theta. r again is 2, and theta was 2 pi divided by 3. So y is equal to 2 times sine of 2 pi divided by 3, which is 2 times root 3 divided by 2, which will simplify to be root 3. And so the y-coordinate is root 3. And then the z-coordinate is still the z-coordinate. So z is equal to 1. And so the same point... 2 comma 2 pi divided by 3 comma 1 in cylindrical coordinates is the same point as negative 1 comma root 3 comma 1 in rectangular coordinates. So let's try another one. Number 2, you have the point 1 comma 3 pi divided by 2 comma negative 2. And so again, this is a point in cylindrical coordinates. That means r is equal to 1, theta is 3 pi divided by 2, and z is equal to negative 2. And so you can find out the x, y, and z coordinate. x is equal to r times cosine of theta, which will be x is equal to 1 times cosine of 3 pi divided by 2. Well, cosine of 3 pi divided by 2 is actually equal to 0. So this will be 1 times 0, which will give you 0 for the x coordinate. The y coordinate is y is equal to r times sine of theta, which will give you y is equal to 1 times sine of 3 pi divided by 2, which is 1 times negative 1, because sine of 3 pi divided by 2 is actually equal to negative 1. And so the y coordinate is negative 1. And the z coordinate stays the z coordinate. So z will be negative 2. And so the point... 1 comma 3 pi divided by 2 comma negative 2 in cylindrical coordinates is actually the point 0, negative 1, negative 2 in rectangular coordinates. Let's try one more. Number 3, you have the point in cylindrical coordinates 5 comma negative pi over 6 comma 4. Now let's convert this to rectangular coordinates using the formulas x equals r times cosine of theta and y is equal to r times sine of theta. Well, if x is equal to r times cosine of theta, you will have x is equal to 5 times cosine of negative pi divided by 6 because that's theta. And so cosine of negative pi over 6 is actually equal to root 3 divided by 2. So 5 times root 3 over 2 will actually give you 5 times root 3 all divided by 2. For the x coordinate. The y coordinate is equal to r times sine of theta, and that gives you y is equal to 5 times sine of negative pi over 6, which is equal to 5 times negative a half, or equal to negative 5 halves. So that's the y coordinate, and the z coordinate will stay 4. And so the same point in cylindrical coordinates as 5 comma negative pi over 6 comma 4 is actually in rectangular coordinates as 5 squared 3 divided by 2 for the x coordinate, the y coordinate is negative 5 halves, and the z coordinate is 4. Okay, example two. Let's actually reverse the process. Let's say we want to convert from rectangular coordinates to cylindrical coordinates this time. So find the cylindrical coordinates for the following points given in rectangular coordinates. Number one, you have the rectangular point, one comma negative one comma four. We want to convert this point from rectangular coordinates to cylindrical coordinates. So let's find out what is r, theta, and z. Well, z is already four, so we already have that. We need to find out what is the value for r and also theta. So you can find out r using the formula r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, and that's obtained from the Pythagorean theorem because you have a right triangle in the xy plane. If you want to find out r squared, x squared was given to us as 1 squared, y squared will be negative 1 squared, and so r squared is equal to 2. And so that means r can either be plus or minus square root of 2. So let's take r to be positive square root of 2 when we actually find out what is the point in cylindrical coordinates. And now if you want to find out the value for theta, you have the relationship that tangent of theta is equal to y divided by x. Well, y divided by x will actually give you tangent of theta is equal to negative 1. Well, now find out what is the angle where tangent is equal to negative 1. That would be theta is equal to arc tangent of negative 1. And that angle is actually negative pi over 4 for the value for theta. And so the point in cylindrical coordinates will be the point r theta z will be square root 2 for the r, negative pi over 4 for theta, and z is equal to 4. And so the point 1 comma negative 1 comma 4 in rectangular coordinates will be the same point as square root 2 comma negative pi over 4 comma 4 in cylindrical coordinates. So let's try another one. Number two, you have the x coordinate is 2 square root 3, the y coordinate is 2, and the z coordinate is negative 1, and this is a point in rectangular coordinates. We want to convert to cylindrical coordinates. So again, if x is 2 square root 3, y is 2, and z is negative 1, we already know that z is negative 1, so we already have one of the coordinates for the cylindrical coordinate. We need to find out what is r and theta. So find out r using the relationship that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Well, x was equal to 2 squared 3, so you have r squared is equal to 2 squared 3 all squared plus the y squared, so that will give you 2 squared. And so if you simplify on the right-hand side of the equation, you have r squared is equal to 16, which means that r can be plus or minus 4. And so again, we'll take r to be positive 4 when we actually write the point in cylindrical coordinates. And now let's find out what is the value for theta. Tangent of theta is y divided by x, which in this case will give you tangent of theta is equal to 2 divided by 2 squared 3 after you substitute in the x and the y coordinate. And so that simplifies to be tangent of theta is 1 divided by squared 3 
Or if you rationalize the denominator by multiplying the numerator and denominator by squared 3 divided by squared 3, you'll have squared 3 divided by 3 is equal to tangent of theta. And so if you want to solve for theta, use the inverse tangent function, or arc tangent. Theta is equal to inverse tangent of squared 3 divided by 3. So what angle is tangent squared 3 divided by 3? It actually is pi over 6. So theta is equal to pi divided by 6. And we already knew the z-coordinate was negative 1. And so if you want to write this point in cylindrical coordinates, the point will be r theta z. Though the r was equal to 4, we're going to take r to be positive. Theta is pi divided by 6, and z is negative 1. So 4 comma pi over 6 comma negative 1 is a point in cylindrical coordinates, and it's the point that's in rectangular coordinates as 2 squared 3 comma 2 comma negative 1. So let's try one more, trying to convert from rectangular coordinates to cylindrical coordinates. So number 3, let's take this point, negative 1 comma negative squared 3 comma 2, and we want to take this point in rectangular coordinates and convert to cylindrical coordinates. So x is negative 1, y is negative squared 3, and z is 2, but we already know that z is 2 for the cylindrical coordinate. And now if you want to find out the values for r and theta, r can be found by solving the equation r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared by replacing the x and y and then solving for r. So x is negative 1, so you have negative 1 squared, plus y is negative squared 3, so you have negative squared 3 in parentheses all squared, and then r squared will equal 4, which means r is equal to plus or minus 2. So again, we'll take r to be positive 2 when we actually write the point in cylindrical coordinates. And then theta can be found by using the relationship that tangent theta is y divided by x, which means if you replace the y with negative squared 3 and x with negative 1, you have tangent of theta is positive squared 3. Well, that is what angle is tangent squared 3. Well, the angle would actually have to be pi over 3. So theta is inverse tangent of squared 3 will give you the value pi divided by 3. And so that's the value for theta. And so now we have the entire point in cylindrical coordinates. We'll take r to be positive 2. Theta is pi divided by 3. And then z was already given to us as 2. And so that's the point in cylindrical coordinates. 2 comma pi divided by 3 comma 2. So one important note about cylindrical coordinates is that there are an infinite number of solutions to the equation tangent of theta is equal to y divided by x. In other words, there are an infinite number of solutions for the value for theta because the tangent function is actually periodic with a period of pi. So every pi radians, the tangent function will actually have the same value or the same ratio y divided by x. And so there are an infinite number of representations of a point in rectangular coordinates when you use cylindrical coordinates, just as in the case of polar coordinates. You had an infinite number of representations. So the reason why we actually want to use cylindrical coordinates rather than rectangular coordinates is this. The use of cylindrical coordinates is actually very common in the field of physics. Physicists actually study electrical charges and the capacitors to store these charges have discovered that these systems actually are sometimes using cylindrical symmetry. And these systems are actually rather complicated for modeling equations in the Cartesian coordinate system or rectangular coordinate system, which makes it easier to actually represent the equation using cylindrical coordinates or represent the equation as a cylindrical equation instead. So one of the equations that we've seen before using rectangular coordinates is the equation for a cylinder, a right circular cylinder, where the generating curve is a circle in the xy plane. And so you have the equation x squared plus y squared is equal to c squared. Well, that's a circle in the xy plane with the radius c. Well, if you want to represent what is the cylinder using cylindrical coordinates, well, the only restriction is that the radius must be c. And so you can represent the radius in cylindrical coordinates with the value for r, because the distance from the origin or the pole, 0, 0, 0, should be a distance of c at all times. And so in cylindrical coordinates, r equals c is the exact same equation in rectangular coordinates as x squared plus y squared equals c squared. And that's because Remember the relationship that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared from the Pythagorean theorem. Well, if you have r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared and x squared plus y squared is equal to c squared, r squared must be c squared. And if you solve for r, you'll actually have r is equal to c. And so this is an equation for a cylinder in cylindrical coordinates. It's actually a much easier representation for a cylinder when you use cylindrical coordinates rather than rectangular coordinates. So in example three, we're going to identify surfaces in cylindrical coordinate system. So we're going to describe surfaces that actually are given as cylindrical equations. So let's say we have number one. Let's say the angle theta must be pi divided by four. And so notice that there are no values for r and there is no value for z. So those can be assuming any real number. And so this actually will describe a half plane through the z-axis that actually forms an angle of pi divided by four in the xy plane. And so this angle, this value for c, is actually equal to pi divided by 4. It will form an angle of pi over 4 in the xy plane, and this will actually give you a half plane through the z-axis. And so the cylindrical equation theta equals c is actually a half plane, where the angle is actually equal to c. And r and z can actually be any real number. Number two, let's say we have the equation in cylindrical coordinates as r squared plus z squared is equal to 9. Well, remember that r squared is actually equal to x squared plus y squared. So you can replace that r squared with x squared plus y squared, and then z squared will stay z squared, and the right side of the equation is equal to 9. Well, notice that this equation has all the variable terms that are being squared, 
On one side of the equation, you have x squared plus y squared plus z squared, and on the other side of the equation, you have a constant term that's being squared that's really 3 squared to give you 9. And so we recognize that this surface is actually a sphere in three-dimensional space, and so the sphere is actually centered at the origin, 0, 0, 0, and the radius is actually equal to 3. And so in rectangular coordinates, a sphere is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 3 squared for a sphere centered at the origin, radius 3. But in cylindrical coordinates, a sphere of radius 3 centered at the origin is actually r squared plus z squared equals 9. And so anytime you have r squared plus z squared is equal to c squared, where c is just a real number, and that actually represents a sphere centered at the origin with radius c. And then number three, let's try the equation z equals r as a cylindrical equation. So remember that r represents the distance from the point to the z-axis. And theta was actually representing any real number because theta does not actually appear in this equation at all. And so if you let z be equal to k to actually find the trace in the xy plane, you actually have k to be positive. That actually will give you z is equal to k. Will give you, if you square both sides of the equation, z squared is equal to k squared. And then z squared, you notice that z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So you have x squared plus y squared is equal to k squared. That actually is a circle centered at the origin of 0, 0 is the origin and the radius is equal to k. And so you actually have a cone that actually has a vertex at 0, 0, 0, and the trace is actually a circle in the plane z equals k. And so this is a half cone. You actually have z equals r, where if r is a positive number, you actually have the upper half cone, so in cylindrical coordinates. And if you have the equation z equals r, where r is a negative value, you actually have the lower half cone. So let's finish up this video by talking about how to convert from rectangular coordinate equation to a cylindrical coordinate equation to actually identify what is a surface. So example four, we're going to find out what is a cylindrical equation for an ellipsoid. So find the equation in cylindrical coordinates for an ellipsoid who has an equation in rectangular coordinates as follows. 4x squared plus 4y squared plus z squared is equal to 1. We're going to take this equation that's in rectangular coordinates involving x, y, and z variables and be able to convert this into an equation involving r, theta, and z to make this a cylindrical equation. So notice the first thing is that 4x squared and 4y squared both have a 4 in common as a greatest common factor or GCF. So you can factor out the 4 from the 4x squared and also the 4 from the 4y squared terms. And so you have 4 times the quantity x squared plus y squared plus z squared outside the parentheses is still equal to 1. And then remember that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared using cylindrical coordinates. And so 4 times r squared plus z squared is equal to 1. And if you isolate the z squared terms on one side of the equation, you have z squared is equal to 1 subtract 4r squared. This is an equation for an ellipsoid using cylindrical coordinates which only involves two variables. You only have the variable r and also the variable z, whereas rectangular coordinates, you actually have the variables x, y, and z. So you have three variables involved. And so now cylindrical coordinates actually makes this a little bit easier equation to look at where you actually have only two variables. So this finishes our video on cylindrical coordinates. We talked about how to convert from rectangular coordinates to cylindrical coordinates and also cylindrical coordinates back to rectangular coordinates. And we also talked about how to describe a surface using cylindrical equations. If you have any questions about any examples of this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while we work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you in the next video when we talk about spherical coordinates.